let's talk about the aspects of food that actually make our body change. That's the macronutrients, the protein, fats, and carbs. And if we stick to the end, I think that it'll add quite a bit of clarity to uh, the confusion of the internet because sadly, every one of these macronutrient groups has been vilified at some point. Uh, fat is not your enemy, protein is not your enemy, and carbs are not your enemy. We just have to learn how to use them to give us what we want. And it's not as clear as the marketers uh, try to make it sound. So anyway, why should you listen to me on any of this? You shouldn't, so don't. Verify everything that is said and remain skeptic. Okay, on face value, most of us already know that as a unit of measure, protein is four calories per gram. Uh, and fat is nine calories per gram, carbs in four calories per gram. This isn't exact, it's an approximation. However, it works pretty well. You can use this, but you need to know the other stuff beyond this to make a educated decision on how you're going to um, set up your, your macronutrients. So the thing that, that, that isn't talked, I wish it was talked about more uh, on the internet especially, is the amount of energy units expended to convert one macronutrient unit to the adipose tissue that you hold in your body. So the visceral or the, um, or the subcutaneous fat, the, 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 you know, like the stuff on your stomach that you don't want. Uh, well, if we're looking at fat and we're looking at protein and we're looking at carbs, the one that has the most, the, that takes the most energy to turn it into fat in your body is protein. Uh, it's very, it, it takes a lot of energy to turn protein into fat on your body. It takes hardly any energy to turn fat uh, into fat on your body. And it takes quite a bit of energy for to turn carbohydrates into fat on your body. So the this is to say that the 80s and early 90s diets, low fat diets weren't necessarily bad from a body composition standpoint. Uh, they just got a little silly when it came to their use of like the types of fat that were uh, included and the processing of uh, the, the the sugars and and those fats in general. I'm getting off topic. Anyway, so if we want to have calories that take more energy to turn into fat, then we should be focusing on protein and carbohydrates. So now it makes it look like the whole low carb, high fat, high protein diet might not be the best thing in the world. So you have to Think about this. Now, take it another step. What helps us keep muscle or grow muscle? Uh, so grow muscle in a caloric surplus or keep muscle in a caloric deficit. So uh, if we want to keep muscle, which we do, body mass, uh, a lean body mass is important at any age, uh, but especially as you grow older. Well, protein obviously helps us keep muscle. Uh, now, the thing that people don't realize is how much carbohydrates actually help you build muscle. When keto started getting really big and we were able to grab more data, it was very quickly understood that the people that were in a caloric surplus, meaning they were trying to gain muscle, uh, if they were in a ketogenic diet, a, a high fat High car or high protein diet and a low carb diet, they put on less muscle. And people that were in a caloric deficit, so they're trying to lose weight, but they were on a higher fat, higher protein diet uh, with lower carbs, those people put on less muscle. Carbohydrates are extremely significant to adding and keeping muscle. So if you want to add muscle and muscle ends up being metabolic, it burns more calories and it helps you. And I know that there's this. I don't want to be looking like Arnold. Well, that's that's just silly talk. Uh, you putting on muscle is a good thing. You're not going to look like some. Uh, you're not going to look like Arnold by accident. We'll say it that way. Um, so, does protein help you keep and grow muscle? Yes. Does fat help you keep and grow muscle? No. Does carbohydrates help you keep and grow muscle? Yes. Okay. So now let's get into the health of it. Is protein healthy? And this is one of the silliest things out there on the internet. I don't know how many times this has to be disproven that protein is not detrimental to your health. It is actually very good for you, especially if you're looking at the source of the protein that you're using. There's a big difference between grass-fed beef and uh, the beef that you get from McDonald's. Those are two very different things. So, um, so from a health aspect, protein, yes, healthy. If you look at the kidney thing, if you look at I'm not going to go into them all, but uh, verify that 
And also, you cannot live without protein. It is not possible. Fat and protein are your only essential macronutrients, meaning if you do not have them in your diet, you're going to die. And carbohydrates are non-essential. You do not have to have them in your diet. I know this chart is going like all over the place. It's like on one side, I'm like, sounds like I'm very pro-carb. On another side, it sounds like I'm very pro-fat. On the other side, it sounds like uh, I'm very pro-protein. Uh, it just kind of depends on which one you're looking at. But there's a way to get this all, and I'm going to show you here in a second. So, so as far as protein is essential, fat is essential, carbohydrates are non-essential. Um, as far as health goes, protein, obviously, it, matter, it depends on the source. Fat, it depends on the source. Uh, like if you're talking about trans fats, not good for you. If you're talking about McDonald's again, obviously, not good for you. If you're talking about seed oils, obviously, not good for you. If you're talking about uh, conjugated linoleic acid, obviously, good for you. Um, if you're talking about coconut oil, good for you. Uh, so it totally depends on the fat, how it was sourced, and what it's gone through. Same thing with carbohydrates. I mean, if, if you're going to sit there and uh, eat Cheetos all day for the health of the carbohydrate, then you're probably fooling yourself. Uh, but if you're going to eat an apple or a banana uh, or honey, the, these are much better sources of carbohydrate. Anyway, let's move on to clarity because I think this is one of the things that uh, really gets screwed up is um, how do we get the adequate protein without getting an excess in the other two. That's, and how do we balance that? So it's, if you're trying to get, so what you wanna do, you wanna get one gram of, uh, of desire. So if you're 400 pounds and you wanna be 250 pounds, you want 250 grams of protein. If you're 220 pounds and you wanna beef up to 250 pounds, you're gonna need 250 grams of protein. If you are, 250 pounds and you want to weigh 180, you want to get 180 grams of protein. If you are 130 pounds and you want to be 125 pounds, uh, you want to eat 125 grams of protein. Uh, so then the next thing that becomes difficult is if you're trying to eat beef, for instance, that is fairly high in fat for the amount of protein that it has versus something like chicken that is extremely, uh, chicken breast that is extremely low in fat for the amount of protein that it has, um, you have these trade-offs. So that is the trick. And this is what you're hiring Grit to help you with is like, how do you get the one gram of protein per pound of desired mass without excess calories? And that's where the clarity comes in. Because you have things like beans that are toted as a protein source. No, they're not. They're a carbohydrate source. They're mostly carbohydrates with a little bit of protein. Uh, you have things like peanut butter that people try to say are a protein source. It's like, no, it's not. That's a fat source. And it's super high in fat and it's very low in pro protein. Just because it has protein in it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a protein source. Um, what else are you getting with the uh, medium that you're eating? So you have to take those into account. Much of this stuff is just behavioral anyway. But the biggest thing that I can encourage you to do is start working on getting one gram per pound of desired one gram one gram per pound of desired body mass uh, in protein every day, and that will in turn, uh, for lack of better words, I hate this phrase, but it'll increase your metabolism, uh, and I mean that by you'll be able to keep and grow more muscle, you'll be able to lose a little bit of fat, your body will have to work harder at uh, at, at turning those calories into fat because most people don't realize just how many carbs and how many fats uh, or how many grams of carbs and how many grams of fat they're eating on a daily basis. And if we go back all the way to the first thing that seems so simple, seems so simple, it's so easy to overeat on fat because it's nine grams, it's nine calories per gram. I said that wrong. Um, and it's so easy to overeat on carbs because they are not satiated. They don't really fill us up very much. And it's so easy to skip out on the protein because it fills us up so quickly. So if I could encourage you to do one thing, here's a, the chart if you couldn't see the whole thing, is focus on protein and then your fats, as long as your sourcing are prob in, a, in, in positive ways, they're probably going to take care of themselves. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much there. 
as long as you're eating your, your grass-fed beef and your free-range chickens, um, you're probably you're probably doing okay in the fat department. You probably don't need to. You probably want to keep that lower. And your carbohydrates do not fall into the silliness of the low-carb diets that are um, the only way to lose fat. Like anybody who says that just obviously doesn't understand the muscle building component. It's like carbohydrates increase muscle mass. And the silly thing is everybody still uses the scale. Part of the reason that people lose weight when they drop carbohydrates is because of the word, the word carbohydrate is carbon hydrate. You're going to have more water floating around <laughs> in your body. So, uh, you're, you know, you take a guy like me, I'm 240 pounds, uh, depending on the day, you can swing that probably six or seven pounds either way. And you put me on a low carb diet for two weeks and I'm probably going to lose 12 pounds, just, just 12 pounds right away. And then if I go super low fat, super high carb one day, I can gain that 12 pounds back all because of the carbohydrates, but my body mass, my muscle mass and my fat mass didn't change at all. Just the total amount of body mass did because of the number of hydrates that I'm walking around with. You want these carbs to fuel your muscle building or to keep your muscle building. You want the protein so that it's hard because it's hard to break down and turn into fat, but it still is helping your lean muscle mass. And these are all can be healthy or, or not healthy, but you have to have the protein and the fat. Concentrate on the protein, getting that lined up with a certain amount of lean, uh, how do I say this, leanness to it, is that even a word? Um, and then focus on the source of your carbohydrates. And the source of your carbohydrates should really be like, like the majority should be fruit. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps clear some stuff up. If you have questions, put them down below.